just, they're doing a wonderful job. Don't you think? Let's give them a hand. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 31, and we'll be start reading in verse 10. Proverbs 31 and verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Her, her heart, her heart... Her heart of her husband does safely trust in her, so that he may, so that he, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She shall, she, she will do him, do him good, and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax, and seeketh and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ship; she bringeth forth fruit. She bringeth forth. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night, and, and giveth meat uh, to her husband, to her household, and portions to her maidens. She considereth a field, and buyeth it. And with the fruits of her hands, she, uh, she, plant, she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength, and strength her arms." She perceiveth uh, that with her merchandise is good. She, uh, her candle goeth not out by the night. She layeth down, uh, she layeth her hands uh, to the spindle, and her hand uh, hold the, the, the dill staff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hand to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household. For all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothes is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates uh, with, uh, w when, when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it. She delivereth uh, uh, girdles uh, unto, the merchandise, unto the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. And she, uh, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and her, and her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of illness. Her children riseth up, and, and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellence them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord shall be praised. Give, uh, give her of the fruits of her hand, and let, and, let her, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Father, we ask today, Lord, that you bless this reading. Lord, we pray today, Lord, you bless this message, Lord, that you've given. Lord, I ask today, Lord, uh, you be in this service in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. With God's help this morning, we want to look at a virtuous woman. A virtuous woman. What is a virtuous woman? Well, a virtuous woman is someone that leads her home or the people that she is surrounded with. She leads them with integrity and discipline. She is someone that has purity in her life. That today is something that is very, uh, that is very far from so many people today is the purity of living a life with integrity that is sought after with discipline and character within their hearts and their lives. We have, as I mentioned before, we have so many people today that are characters, but we have very little today that have character. As we see here today in verses 10, we'll be looking at this passage and pretty much just staying within this, this the rest of this chapter this morning. But we see here the pricelessness of that she has. In verse 10, who shall find a virtuous woman? Her price is far above rubies. A virtuous woman is someone today, as I mentioned, that is a purity. Someone today that, that, that is looking out not just for herself, but mainly and above all, she looks out above everyone else. I look across this room here this morning and I see many folks today that look for uh, and, and about everyone else. You would be surprised, and I, and I don't like to just mention people, but you would be surprised at the people that I come in contact with that says, B. Hicks babysitted me. 
You would be, maybe you won't be surprised because you grew up around her, you know who she is, and you know what type of woman she is. And they talk about something that is very pleasant. And we know that Sister B is a very pleasant woman. She is very pleasant to be around, as well as many others in here. We talk about some that, uh, that, this, that just raise them and encourage them and bless them. And, and I'm looking across the room here, and, and it's hard telling how many folks that Sister Faye Morrow has raised. It's hard telling. She knows. She won't brag. She just did it because she loved those children and loved those people. It's hard telling about the people that are women active for Christ, has trained and taught how to live a life that is pure. Amen? See, it is a church today that goes forth. And it's a church today that we realize that if we want true peace within our lives, if we want the virtue, the purity, the integrity that's in our hearts and our lives, we must have a a vision that I want my life to be patterned after this, ladies. You say, well, I've never been a mother. Well, I see it, ladies in here, that's never been a mother. But they have more pictures of children on their wall than than what most mothers have. They have tens of thousands that they have talked to and they encouraged. Whether it be at work, where they have mentored someone, whether it be at church that they have taught someone, whether it be in the community that they have taught and they encouraged, and they've just been a shoulder. Amen? It's the purity of a virtuous woman that allows someone to say, I can comfortably go in the presence of this person and share my concerns. Isn't that wonderful? And I'm looking across the room here and I see dozens, countless women today that you can go in the, to the, where they're at and have no concerns about if the gossip is going to get out. But the only place it gets out to is in their throne room of prayer and they pray to God. That's what a virtuous and pure woman is. We see here today that her price is far above rubies. We see here today, I've read this somewhere and I wish I could have known who so I could give uh, give, uh, give credit to this. But the nation's greatest asset is a Christian woman. Amen? The nation's greatest asset is a Christian woman and a Christian mother. We today must have an understanding that there are preachers in the pulpits because of a mother praying or because of a Sunday school teacher praying or because a a sainted lady in the church had, had, had a desire to see. I can remember one day that an elderly lady in the community called my dad and said, Preacher, I need to talk to you about your son. And I thought, oh my goodness, what have I done now? Most of the time when somebody says, preacher, we need to talk to you about your children, it is not a good thing, especially when my mom and dad was raising me. (laughs) For you all, that may have never been a problem. But Miss Birdie walked up to church. She walked from here, uh, probably about, uh, I don't know, from here, to the back of the corner lot that we own, or or from here to uh, the the apartments on the other side of the apartments. uh, She walked from, and she was in her 80s, she walked to church early. She said, I just want to let you know, Tim's a boy. He's he's, he's rambunctious. And I was was going on 17, 18 years old. Tim's a young man, he's rambunctious. He's, He's got a lot of learning to do, but I want to see him teach a Sunday school class in this church. I didn't want to teach a Sunday school class in a church. (laughs) She was not my mother, but she was looking out for me as a mother. She was old enough to be my grandmother, but she loved me enough to invest in me. I want to believe that part of my ministry is because of her prayers. See, that's what I'm talking about today. You may have a birdie in your life, You may have a birdie that that was just loved life to the fullest. You may have someone in your life that, that encouraged, that lifted up, and told you the truth whether you liked it or not. But the greatest asset, not just the church has, not just the home has, but this nation has, is a godly woman that is praying and supporting and encouraging. 
We see in verse 11, we see the pride that it has. In verse 11, we go forth here. It says, the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her. She has no worries. The heart of the husband of a godly, la- uh, the husband of a godly lady don't have to worry. If she says she's going to work, she, he knows that she's going to work. If she has to work over, he knows that she's working over. It doesn't matter where she's at. or where- He has confidence and trust in this person. Why? Because her character and her integrity says so. Because the things that she has in her heart and her life is not about herself. It's not the pleasure of herself. But it's to bring honor first and foremost to God above and then her husband and her children. That's what it's talking. It says, that's safely. It's a satisfaction. Her husband knows the wife will bring good to him and his family. That's what a a godly woman knows that. A godly husband knows that. The safety, the safety there in verses 12. In verses 13 and verse, or excuse me, verses 11 and verse 12. You can trust in the safety. And then in verse 12 it says, She will do him good and not evil all the days of her, her life. It's a safety. It's a safety. She will stand by her family. Through troubles, through trials, through difficulties, through, uh, through all sorts of ordeals, she is there and she's not going anywhere. Isn't that wonderful? In today's world, in today's world, we see so many women that work outside the home, my wife included. It's a rarity anymore if a woman doesn't work outside the home. And that's the facts of the matter. So a lady has much more than just the home to take care of anymore. It is, it is, it is school. Now, without saying any needs, how many mothers would never want to hear virtual learning again? I thought I'd get an amen of that. How many mothers would not like to hear remote days anymore? Not because your children, you don't want your children around, but... but And it just makes much more stress, much more concern, much more anxiety upon you. So we're dealing with much more than just household needs and and children needs and someone that is sick. But we're dealing with things that's above our control. A mother can fix and patch a knee. A mother can take care of a stomach that is hurting. But when it comes to so many things that we faced over the last year, a mother cannot fix a pandemic. And the anxiety, I'm sure, is just wrecking and tearing and turning your heart into pieces. But let's look at verse 13. Let's look at verse 13, the purpose, the purpose that you have today. I know that you wear many different hats. You wear a hat from from where you work, outside the home. You wear a hat inside the home. And sometimes you wear 20 hats that are inside the home. Some of you are caregivers. Some of you are, 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 are ministering and raising special needs children. And you do it with a smile. That's a gift from God, church. Amen? That's a gift that only God can give. Let's look at verse 13 through 16. It says, she, see, pardon me, she seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like a merchant ship. She, she, she bringeth her food from afar. She, she riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her husband and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buyeth it and the fruits of her hands she planteth a vineyard. So she's very resourceful. There's been a lot of times where I'm sure that you needed something for your children and you didn't have the means to purchase that for your children. But you resourcefully gathered and gleaned and made whatever had to be done or provided whatever had to be done. Why is that the case? Because you're persistent. You're persistent. Let's look here in verses 13. She seeketh. She seeketh. In other words, she actively looks. She actively finds. In other words, she just don't sit down. Not one place in God's Word, and I'm adding the men in this so you don't think I'm picking on the women today. Not one place in God's Word where it says it's okay to be lazy. Men, I can say men, 
and not get looked at funny. <laughs> but you all know what people, you know what I'm talking about. Not one place. And there's not one place in here where it says that this, she was actively seeking. Now I know that our body is made to rest. I know that our body is made to sit down. We have to or we will be overworked and we're not good for anyone, right? If we don't take care of us, then we can't take care of the ones that are around us. If you listen to anyone that we've had a couple military medics in our church, Brother Al, Brother Jackie. We've had some folks in our church that have done emergency personnel, whether it be, uh, whether it be a, a EMT, a fireman, a nurse. And the first thing they'll tell you is, if you can't help yourself, then you can't help them. Am I right? You have to make sure and how do we do that, Christian? We actively seek God's Word to be put into us. We actively seek His wisdom. We actively seek His rest. See, there's rest in His arms. Amen? There's rest in His presence. There's rest that He allows us to have. But if we actively, persistently seek after Him... We seek, we're actively, we see here in verses 16 and 17 where it says they consider a field and they buy it and he goes out and she, she is strengthened. She's planning. She is planning. There's many times in our household I'll go home and, and I'll get my book out and I say, Brandy, what do we have this week? Brother Will, I've learned it's a whole lot better that way. This past week, I had some conflicts and, and our board members really, uh, they just really stepped up in a mighty way and I'm very grateful for them. And Brandy said, I told you that three weeks ago. And I know she did. But I forgot. She's planning actively. We see here today that she's seeking out a good bargain. She is seeking out a good bargain. I remember going shopping with my grandmother. We had to go to Kroger's. Up there, they had Kroger's. She had to go to Deemer's. Deemer's was a small store that's still open that I like to shop in still today if I go up there. Uh, she had to go to, to go to Deemer's. And then she had to go to Nancy Ray's. Now, Nancy Ray's was a food mart, kind of like a, a food country that would remind you of if you lived in Moss Heim or somewhere around, like a food country. It's just a small, again, locally. And she had to go to each one of these. And then she had to go to Rink's. Now, Rink's was like a Howard Brothers. It was like a Rose's. And she would have to go to all three of those. And the time she got done, my, my, my pep would say, she saved 10 cents and we've spent $3 in gas. <laughs> but she was actively, that was her desire, to find the best deal. To make sure that she was looking for the best bargain. My grandmother and grandpa lived on a very meager income. Very meager. Now, all of these were about yelling distance from one another. It wasn't like going from Jonesboro to Johnson, even to Johnson City. It wasn't even, it would be like going from the Commons to TSC. Yeah. That's how small the community was. And every place was in between. You could about yell and say, I'm here. And you'd hear them down at the other place. So she was actively looking for a bargain. She wanted to make sure that her husband took care of bringing in the money, and she took care of squeezing out the money. Does that make sense? Some of us live that every day, don't we? We see here today that she was looking for a bargain. We see the praise that she has. In verses 25, let's skip above. I, I have a bunch here that I wanted to look over, and, and I had about 10 points. And I thought, my people just not going to like that. So I'm challenging you today. When you go home, look at this chapter. Whether you're man or woman, boy or, or, or girl, look at this. Because if we understand this, then we're able to give praise to our wives where praise is needed, husband. But let's skip to 25 for the sake of time. It says the strength. In verse 25, it says strength and honor are her clothing. And she shall... Re and, and she sh shall... Re my, I apologize. And she shall shall rejoice in time to come. There's too many SHs there together. And it says, she shall rejoice in time to come. The strength, what she does, she does right. Amen? Now, not much anymore with our boys. If they get a scrape or they get a, a cut, about the only way I know they've got one, I can follow the blood trail into the bathroom where they got a Band-Aid. 
But when our kids were young, they didn't come to find daddy. They didn't come to find me at all. They come find mama. Why? Because if they got stung, I'd look at it, make sure there wasn't a stinger in it. If there's somebody around that was chewing tobacco, I'd have them spit tobacco and put it on it, and I'd say, I'll it'll draw it out in a minute. Now, how many of us dads have done that? Okay, I guess I'm the only one. <laughs> Maybe my, Emily said, that was disgusting. It draws it out. But mama, she takes them in and sets them in the bathroom. She blows on it. She kisses it. She don't care how dirty. She don't care how stinky. If it's a skin knee, she just don't say, ah, you don't need any stitches. You're not getting blood everywhere. You're okay. But she takes them in and she'll set them down. And now not much anymore. They're 14 and they're 11. They don't like that anymore. But they still like mama to know that, they, that she cares. They still, one of them said, I got a Band-Aid, mom. You know why? She, she, they don't tell me they got a Band-Aid. But they come in and they say, I got a Band-Aid, mom. They want Brandy to know because Brandy will take time and love all over them. Where they wanted, whether they act like they want it or not, they want it. Did, did I, did, let me say that again. Whether our children act like they want our loving or not, they want it. And mamas have a way, a unique way of sharing that. Daddies have a unique way of loving. Daddies have their own purpose. We're supposed to teach our children how to be strong. We're supposed to teach our boys how to be boys and grow up to be men. Amen? We're supposed to teach them how to work and have work ethic. We're supposed to teach them that sometimes you just have to suck it up and go on. That's what our job is to do. Sometimes in a more diplomatic way than what we should be doing it. But a mother, when she has a skinned knee, when she has a bloody forehead or, or a bruised foot, or she does it and she does it very well. We also see that the soundness words of wisdom in verses 26, and she openeth her mouth with wisdom. There have been more and I've heard of an instance just this past week. There have been more ministries destroyed, not because the husband could not fulfill his duties in the pulpit, but because the wife would not keep his mouth shut. There have been more people uh, got out of church because men and women do not have tactfulness. Right here it teaches us. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. And her tongue is the law of kindness. That's how a godly woman must be. A godly woman must season our words with salt, right? A godly woman must have an understanding that my words can help or my words can hurt. A godly woman must have an understanding that I must make sure that when people see me, they see a woman of integrity and virtue. I must have soundness in my words. In verse 27, it says here, it says that they are settled. They're not wishy-washy. They're not one way today and another day tomorrow. We've all worked around those people. Not everybody look at It's not Larry Kelly either. For years, I worked on an assembly line. For years, I, I, I would see those people very early in the morning. Some people are early people. Some people come to work singing. Some people go out of the work singing. Some people enjoy mornings. Other people do not. Some people are one way today and another way the next day, and you just don't know how to confront that. But here, a virtuous woman is not that way. I'm not saying that we don't have our bad days. I'm not saying that we don't have a, an understanding uh, that, that some days just aren't good. Can I get an amen? <laughs> some days aren't. Some days are bad. But we can still have the same mindset and the same spirit that controls us. We see here in verses 29 and 30 that we can have... Purity again. 
Do you see where it starts with virtue and purity and it ends with virtue and purity? It starts with someone that is saying, this is what you need to be. And the person that's like this, they, need to be, they, they are far above rubies. They're priceless. And then you come down here and they're saying, now if you have someone that's like this, if you have someone that's virtuous, if you have someone that is, uh, that, that is, that is pure, if you have someone in your life that, that everything that they do is about someone else, they're worthy of praise. Amen? They're worthy of praise. They're worthy of praise. When I think of this chapter... I think of Sister Gaylene Kelly. Don't you? I tried not to mention it, Brother Larry, but it just, they just go together. Everything she did around here was about this church and making Larry, her husband, look good. Not that he needed any help. But she thought he did. And she did it with a smile. She loved people. Not because they were lovable, but because God put something in her heart that caused her to love people. See, we have all these ladies around here that encourage, that pick up, that lift up, that are here, that teach, that do things for us, and they are worthy of our praise. They are worthy of of what is due them. Sister Madge Crane is a hero. My mind, I'm not sure about you, but if I had two lung procedures this week and I'd lain in an old aggravating hospital bed and I'd been poked and prodded and moved and not where I wanted to be, I promise you, I probably wouldn't be here. We're being honest, right? But Sister Madge wouldn't want any other place to be. See, let's glean from what we have right here. In this world, they think that you have to be able to to be on TV or to have a big name or to have a big prestige. We've got it all right here in our church. I assure you that you have a pastor's wife that looks out, not just for me, but looks out for this church. I assure you that we have a pastor's wife that bathes her words in salt and with wisdom. We have so much to glean from. And I look across here, and there's some here, and there's some that's not able to be here. Sister Arlene Mitchell, that I have never seen her frown. She is continually smiling. That's things that we can glean from. That's things that we can pattern our life after. Not just women, men. We can pattern our life after these women that live this godly character day in and day out. And they must be praised. Let's give our our godly women, let's give them a hand. And let's stand and and recognize them today. As we all continue to stand, please, as our musicians come, this wasn't a very hard message. This wasn't a long message. I had two papers and I condensed it to one, okay? But I hope it was a message, one, to encourage women to keep going on, to be persistent when the world says don't. And I also to encourage us men and the ones that are around these godly women to praise them because praise is due. As we lift our voice to sing,
If you say, preacher, I just want to come around the altar and I just want to praise God for placing these men or placing these women in my life. This, this lady did not have to invest in me. She wasn't my mother, but she invested and I'm here because of that today. Or, or my mother worked. My mother did not have it easy, but my mother loved me when she shouldn't have. But she did anyway. If we need to come, let's come. Maybe you're here today man or woman and you're saying I would love to live a life that is pure that is planning and that is going forth with purity you can do that by saying here's my heart and my life Lord I want you to have it I want you to have my heart and I want my life to be pure for your glory and your honor. You can do that by saying, Lord, I need Jesus and I want to be saved. As we sing, let's come, let's come.